When troubleshooting a built-in vacuum system where the complaint is of poor performance, the issue could be either a leak in the system or an obstruction in the system. And the most helpful tool I've found for diagnosing the trouble is this here. And this is actually in two parts. Uh, the vacuum gauge is something that most everybody in the vacuum world is familiar with. It measures in inches of water column, which is the most common measurement of suction for a residential vacuum system. The other part is this Y fitting here. This is made by HP VacuFlow, and it's, it's a Y adapted down to fit into the wall inlet, and on the other side of the Y, there is a steel plate precisely drilled with a 5 8 inch orifice. And this is tremendously more useful than the vacuum gauge by itself because it allows you to take two types of measurements. One with this hole blocked off and no air flowing is called sealed vacuum. And this is usually the measurement you take with a vacuum gauge. But the other one that uh, I think is the more important of the two is working vacuum with the hole uncovered and that shows you how much pressure remains in this in fixture with air flowing and in troubleshooting the system if your sealed vacuum is low then you know you're looking for a leak if your sealed vacuum is fine close to what it should be then you know you're looking for an obstruction if your working vacuum is low but your sealed vacuum is fine. So let's take a look using this system at home. Okay, sealed first. You can see on the gauge that is about 90. And working vacuum is about 50. Now I'm slightly embarrassed to admit that my own system has about the bare minimum performance you should expect out of a modern built-in vacuum, uh, but that's because I, I have a very old system in this house and I just get a kick out of it because uh, it's over 50 years old and just won't die. But uh, for today this performance would be pretty low. Today you want a system that goes up to about 80 plus working and 120 plus of sealed pressure. But I happen to know that my system, the motor, produces a maximum of 90 inches or so of sealed vacuum. And working vacuum is only going to be about 50. So you do, in order to use this, have to know something about the system you're working on. Um, because if this system were able to go up to 120 or 130 and I was only getting 90, then I would know I was looking for a leak. Um, starting at the motor. Maybe it's uh, not seated on its gasket. Uh, maybe there's a, a seal on the container at the power unit or the utility inlet valve has a seal that's gone bad uh, all the way through the piping system and you can disconnect the piping and check the sealed vacuum at the machine and the working vacuum uh, to compare how much loss you're getting with the piping and if you have leakage in the piping system, most often that's going to be at the wall inlets. Either, either this gasket has gone bad on one or more inlets, as usually it'll be just missing, and you'll hear a, a whistling noise from whichever inlets are not in use that are broken, or uh, very commonly the gasket in the wall where the neck of the wall inlet meets the mounting plate inside will not be doing its job and you'll also hear a noise when this is closed but then you'll open it and this will be fine. So um, that would be a leak. But if you have a blockage your system is still sealed so your sealed pressure on the gauge will be very close to a hundred percent of what the system should be producing but your working pressure will be very low. Usually anything below 40 uh, will feel just very weak uh, at the end of the hose and you will know that starting at the, on many brands there's a screen just uh, before the motor intake that could be blocked. The primary filter could be blocked. 
or you may have an obstruction in the tube system itself. And if you have an obstruction in the tubing, uh, usually there will be an installation issue. Sometimes the fitting will be backwards and it will catch all kinds of debris in it. Um, and your working vacuum will very quickly drop down to nothing because it doesn't take all that much debris to block a two inch uh, tube if there's a stopping point in it for, for debris. But anyway, this is the most valuable tool you can have and they say anything quantified always improves so it's really good to put a number on the performance of your system. This can also be used at the hose end and typically your working vacuum will be 10 to 20 inches lower at the hose end than it is at the wall inlet because the hose is the greatest restriction in the system. Your sealed vacuum should be pretty close of course to uh, what it is at the wall inlet. But anyway, I highly recommend having one of these if you service built-in vacuums. It makes a world of difference, and I even record the measurements on the customer's invoice so that I can go back and see, you know, what it's supposed to be. And that has helped me tremendously.